Labor infighting is continuing to play out after the ALP's New South Wales State Conference on the weekend. The latest aggravation has been prompted by the New South Wales rights push to direct preferences against the Greens at the next federal election. The stoush between Labor and the Greens is set to come to a head this coming weekend, with a by-election in the Victorian seat of Melbourne. The Greens look set to win the seat held by Labor for a century. And as Heather Hewitt reports, there'll be more recriminations to come. The historic Victoria markets lie in the heart of the inner suburban state seat of Melbourne and reflect the mix of progressive voters, blue collar workers and immigrants who for 100 years have backed the Labor Party. But that could well change at a by-election this weekend. We're headed towards a very, very important outcome, a litmus test for the history of Australian politics, no less. It's a tough fight. I've made that point all the way along. What amounts to a two-horse race between Labor and the Greens, with the Liberals opting out, will probably come down to preferences, distributed by 14 special interest candidates. For Labor, the fight has now got one hell of a lot tougher. After the very public stoush at the New South Wales State Labor Conference between left and right factions at the weekend. All of it centred on tackling the Greens head on and not giving them automatic preferences. The Greens political party are not our friends, they are not our allies, they are our political rivals. If you have a look at their policy manifesto, you will see economic vandalism, you will see populism. You will see extremism. The fact that we choose to spend a week talking about our preferences might help explain why more and more Australians are deciding that Labor is not their preference. You got many signatures? Yeah, look, thousands. It might seem a world away from the intense grassroots campaigning back in Melbourne, but the effect of the bloodletting is being felt here. Could you have done with that like a hole in the head? Look, you know, it, it's happened, I can't control it. I'm looking at the things that I can control in this, in this election. I don't think that the negative, um, the negative conversation that's going on at the federal level is helping them at all. Key Labor figures in Victoria fear the impact of the New South Wales debate is going to be felt here this Saturday when voters turn out for a by-election that's now been elevated to the national spotlight. There's some annoyance with ALP colleagues across the border over the timing and nature of their onslaught against the Greens. Victoria is very different to New South Wales. The commentary I'm running, the critique I'm running of the Greens, is fundamentally different to what some of my New South Wales comrades are doing. Um, I wouldn't use the same phrases. I'm not, a, I'm not attacking them, if you like, on the same basis. Um, I want to have a debate. I don't want to belt them. I want to beat them. And we have the, the message is clear enough that the New South Wales Labor right has used a sledgehammer against the Greens, likening them to one nation, with no thought to the close battle being waged in the seat of Melbourne, where progressive voters now dominate. Well, well look, that's that's a matter for New South Wales. They certainly didn't ring me about it first. Um, what, and I Do you wish they had? I, well, I wouldn't really um, expect them to, and perhaps I wouldn't have been able to change their mind anyway. My commentary and my critique of the Greens doesn't relate to them as an extremist party. It doesn't relate to, I think, making imprudent and inaccurate comparisons with groups like One, One Nation. I would not make that comparison, and I have not. Comparing them with One Nation is a ridiculous slur on all Greens voters who are principled progressives, educated, uh, and I think it will backfire in the most progressive seat in Melbourne. Hello, how are you? Media commentator and former state Liberal advisor Stephen Mayne is running as an independent in the seat because of his fury that Labor has backtracked on poker machine reform. A key reason for his candidacy is to give all of his preferences to the Greens, which may be enough to get them across the line. Well, I'm confident of finishing third on the primary. I think there's 28% of the Liberal vote which is looking for a home, uh, and I think I can get between 5 and 10% and hopefully influence the outcome and send a message to the Labor Party about poker machine reform. As campaigning builds up in this final week, the wily retired Greens leader Bob Brown smells victory as he does the rounds with his party's candidate. He's using the New South Wales Labor rights attacks as ammunition. I think people don't like the Paul House, uh, Sam Dastiari view that uh, the Greens should be somehow or other uh, vilified 
for being progressive, uh, for taking Labor's policies. Well, the problem is not the Greens, it's that Labor has dumped on so much of its past. It's a big ask to take a seat from Labor that's been held by them for 100 years. Do you really think you can pull that off? Adam Bant was elected as the a representative for Melbourne. Melbourne has already voted for one Green um, to represent them and I think we can do it again. No. It's a reminder Labor is all too aware of and maybe that helps explain why, unlike the Greens, they're trying to keep federal politicians as far away from this electorate as possible. Well, there's some of them I wouldn't be in a hurry to invite down, people who like to sing a lot and things like that. I wouldn't be inviting Craig Emerson down to sing to Melbourne um, voters. I don't think that would do us any good. Why are there no federal ministers campaigning for you? Look, it was a, um, uh, you know, federal parliament was sitting until quite late into um, the, uh, the campaign. Um, this is a state election. It's a sentiment eagerly embraced by the Prime Minister and her deputy. It's a state government by-election and of course the voters of Melbourne uh, understand that they're voting for a seat in the state parliament. What implications will it have if you lose the by-election in Melbourne on the weekend? Well, it's a state by-election, it has none. But internal Labor polling shows voter disenchantment with the federal government is biting hard in this state electorate. Well, I think Melbourne voters can distinguish between uh, a state by-election and a range of other issues. But but there are other issues at play, of course there are. You know, we are a national Labor Party, the party at a national level is facing very, very significant challenges. Uh, and it, uh, you know, I think it's wrong to say that these things don't play out. Do you think that federal issues are involved in this state by-election? I think the Labor Party vote is going to fall and Julie Gillard's performance and unpopularity will be a big factor in that. If Labor does lose this seat it's held for a century, the blame game will be on in earnest. And you can bet fingers will be pointed not just at the New South Wales right, but also the performance of the Gillard government overall. Even with the Liberals out of the race, the result will be seen as a firm indicator of Labor's standing for the federal election. Heather Hewitt reporting.